Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and my friend here is a plaster cloth uh, display mask of a gorilla. It's very light. It's got three layers of plaster cloth, um, two layers of paper strips and paste using single ply um, paper towels just to get that, um, maybe if I can get him up here, if you can see that uh, fur texture right here. And there's a little bit of the air dry clay. I had some that I had mixed up, um, and I had a little bit left over from another project, so I went ahead and used that to make the definition of the uh, eyelids around his eyes. Other than that, it's just um, plaster cloth. You can see the plaster cloth inside, I think. Um, I've been seeing a lot of plaster cloth masks on YouTube, and I've I've just never been quite sure how they'd come out, so I thought I'd give it a try and see. I didn't leave the video camera on to do through this whole thing because because this is the first time I've ever actually tried it this way. I didn't know how it would come out, um, but I did take a whole lot of pictures, and since I like them, I'm going to go ahead and put all those pictures together and make a video so you can see how it was actually done. I started out by bringing up a whole lot of photographs of gorillas uh, taken from the side. I just went out to Google image search and then I made a kind of a generic sketch of the side of the gorilla. I'm going to be using this as a pattern the same way I do when I'm making um, armatures for paper mache sculptures. I cut out the uh, pattern in cardboard and uh, taped it on to a, just a piece of foam board. And then I used some damp, um, heavy um, brown paper to fill in the spaces. I've done this before and it's just an awful lot easier than trying to crumple up dry paper and taping it all down with masking tape. As soon as I had enough paper on there to kind of fill up the empty spaces so I didn't have to use up a whole lot of clay, I got out some duct tape and just uh, taped some plastic over the wet paper and then started adding some uh, clay to it. I'm using the WED clay that I've been using lately. Um, I just happen to like working with it and um, I happen to have some around. I'm um, leaving the uh, profile free so you can see that the, the actual side view of the gorilla is looking pretty much the way I wanted him to. Um, have to fill out the rest of it, of course, by eye, but the profile was set by the pattern and made it a lot easier. I did this when I made that uh, concrete lion head, too. I think you probably saw me doing that if you've w been watching my videos. Now, the, um, the final clay looked like this. When I had the form the way I wanted it to, I got out a spray bottle of car wax and sprayed it. Uh, just to keep the inside of the plaster cloth a little bit cleaner. Um, I had been trying other methods and I wasn't real happy with those. This worked a little bit better, but it's it still left a little bit of clay residue on the inside of the plaster cloth. Um, not bad though, it came out pretty well. And then I just started adding my uh, wet pieces of plaster cloth, um, little pieces of it at a time, I'm being very careful to smooth it down as much as possible. The um, plaster cloth didn't come out entirely smooth. It never does because of the actual texture of the plaster cloth itself, but there was very little finishing work left to do. At this point, it took maybe five more minutes uh, before it was ready to pull off of the clay. You can see there was still a little bit of residue left from the clay, even though I had um, put on that car wax. It helped. I think it was better than the other ways that I'd been trying it before. Um, but I did want to have a third layer of plaster cloth on the inside and sometimes when you add uh, new plaster cloth to old plaster or cured plaster in this case um, it doesn't stick very good so I got out my glue and water mixture that I had just sitting around and I used that uh, just to kind of brush it through. I don't know if it actually made any difference or not, but I didn't have any problem at all with delaminating, so maybe it helped. Maybe I didn't need it at all. Who knows? Just as soon as I had that third layer on the inside, um, I turned the mask over and I started adding the eyelids using just a, I think I had a, about two tablespoons of air dry clay left over from another project. Um, that's the air dry clay recipe that you find out on my blog or on my YouTube channel. And um, it really didn't take much. I actually had some left over. I used it just for the eyelids and then to make a few wrinkles right under the eyes where uh, a gorilla's face seems to look kind of 
old. <laughs> just um, It made a nice texture there. Um, and then I started adding the texture for the fur. Um, first I laid down uh, flat a one-ply bumpy um, paper towel and um, using the um, Elmer's glue and water mixture. I didn't use a like a normal flour and water paste or anything. I just used the, flour, the, um, the glue and water mixture and brushed it through uh, the paper towel after it was laid down there to make sure it was fully soaked in it. And then on top of that bumpy paper towel, I um, put some very thin, unbumpy paper towel. This was actually a two-ply paper towel that I pulled apart, so I'm only using you know, half of it, um, half of the sheet. Um, so I turned it into a one-ply, two-ply I've tried before and it just doesn't work. Um, I don't know why, it, but it just doesn't work very well. But the one-ply was thin enough so I could then just kind of uh, wet it down really good and kind of scrunch it th around. Um, because it was so thin, it, um, it still showed some of the bumps from the first layer, a bumpy <laughs> paper towel. I actually, you, I didn't show you the pile of stuff that I experimented with uh, before I came up with that particular um, combination, but I was, I was happy with it. It, it looks pretty organic. Um, and it, it looks fur-like to me, so I think it worked. I had some of the glue and water mixture left over, uh, so I just dumped some um, drywall joint compound into it and mixed it up to make a nice thick uh, homemade gesso. I didn't want it too thick because I didn't want to lose all that texture that I just worked so hard at. Uh, I put several layers to make it nice and smooth across the muzzle, which didn't have any paper on it at all. And then um, I, I think I gave that maybe two or three layers and just one layer over the paper strips. Um, if you put it on too thickly, like I did here to try to cover up some of the bumps, um, you get a little hairline crack sometimes when it dries. Um, if it matters to you, you can just go ahead and brush um, some more of the gesso over it um, or sand it or um, you can even dampen it with a sponge and smooth it out. Um, it, uh, it seems to work just fine. And then when the gesso was completely dry, I mixed up some warm uh, black using regular black and some, um, I think it was raw umber that I happened to have hanging around and I brushed it over the entire mask. Now when you paint something, everything, all one color, um, you end up with kind of a dead look. It uh, doesn't have very much interest going on. So that wasn't really what I was looking for. I wanted a, a very, very dark uh, gray or black gorilla, but I didn't want it to just be all <laughs> one color, if that makes any sense. So what I did then was uh, I mixed up um, some golden acrylic glazing liquid with a um, kind of an iron oxide color uh, and brush that over the uh, dried black um, and immediately um, wiped it off with a damp paper towel so that it would only stay in the uh, creases. That seemed to help a lot but it still wasn't quite there so then I mixed up uh, again the golden uh, acrylic glazing liquid. The golden is the brand and the acrylic, the um, glazing liquid just keeps the uh, the paint from drying too quickly and it also thins it out in um, without without making it watery like it would if you tried to thin it with water. So I mixed that up um, with a very very light gray and I brushed that over the um, the fur again and pulled that off. Since the glazing liquid makes the paint transparent the um, the iron oxide color um, also shows through. So you've got a light gray and you've got kind of the uh, reddish brown and the black all kind of uh, blending in together. Um, it's subtle, <laughs> it's really subtle, and it's kind of hard to show on a photograph. But it does. Um, it added a lot of interest. I think I I think it was a lot better than it would have been if it I had just left it black. Then I mixed up a really, really dark gray. Um, I, I kind of cheated. I uh, grabbed some of my iron um, coating that I got from Sculpt Nouveau for the gray part. I made it a little bit darker by adding some black acrylic paint. And then I added some clear gesso just to thin it out a little bit. 
Um, it was just an odd <laughs> combination, but it, it, it worked. I um, put that on um, with dry brush technique, so it only just skimmed right over the top uh, of that um, uh, fur. And so all of the color that I'd already put on there stayed there, but I ended up with a nice, really dark, a slate gray that has just a little bit of a metallic sheen to it, which is kind of cool. I let the dark gray dry for several hours um, outside. It's uh, nice and sunny and very windy today, so things dried really quickly, and then I painted those eyes. Um, I didn't show you um, <laughs> step by step on the eyes because I did a whole lot of experimental um, starts and, and redos and <laughs> just um, you and the one is to see it but um, I think they came out okay. Uh, gorillas have very distinctive eyes and very striking. I made him looking just a little bit to the side because I just <laughs> I was afraid that when I came down, if he was on my wall and I came down in the morning before my cup of coffee, that having a gorilla on the wall staring straight at me was going to be a little bit too much. So I have him looking off to the, to the side. Um, maybe he's uh, waiting for a friend or something. Now all he needs is his hanger. Um, I'm going to do that with a uh, glue gun and just a piece of string. And I'll give it a... Um, a varnish, a matte varnish, and he's all done. I hope you had fun watching this video. Um, if it gave you some ideas, I hope it did. Um, and if you make anything, be sure to come over and show it to me, ultimatepapermache.com. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.